Welcome to Skill Builder. I'm Robin Clevett. I'm at the Capel Build and I'm just about to embark on something which is really exciting to me. It's the very first part of my first fix and in this case it's the MVHR which means mechanical ventilation and heat recovery. Now if you've been following the series earlier on you would have seen that when I was doing the summer house I used a steel guttering and now that was from a company called Lindab. I particularly like that guttering and that's why I went for it. It was a steel guttering. It's got, it's got lots of properties that you don't get from plastic of course. It looks fantastic and so the name Lindab you would have already seen. Now Lindab are also leaders in residential ventilation. So what is MVHR? Well I'm going to give you a very brief introduction into what MVHR is and what it does. So take a look around me. I'm in a very new build, so what you're looking at here is a virtually airtight property. Now, that's great because it reduces your heating bills, but what it does do is it reduces the ventilation. Let's go back to Victorian times very quickly. Houses were built just with very leaky roofs, they were very leaky windows, you had open fireplaces, so there was a lot of ventilation coming through, but they leaked a lot of energy and a lot of heat. Why don't you just put an extractor fan in every room? Because what extractor fans do, first of all, let me tell you about the cost of an extractor fan. So you've got to buy the extractor fan. You've then got to put in two points, the feed to it, and then you've got to put a fuse spur for it as well. So an ugly fuse spur on the outside of the bathroom wall, it's generally high level, it doesn't look that fantastic. So you've got a sparky who's got to do two points for every single bathroom. In this case, we've got five or six extractor fans in this building. So also, because this is a single story flat roof, we generally have to take a terminal straight out the flat roof. So we've got to get the flat roofer back and he's got to put six collars in, which unless they're done perfectly, they may leak in the future. I don't like that either. So the, all that wet air is going to be sucked out, sent straight into the atmosphere, all that heat as well. So you're heating the bathroom up, you've got your underfloor heating on, you want to keep it nice and warm so you're not going to freeze in the shower and you're going to have a 15 minute shower, it's going to be fantastic and all that warm air is going to go straight out the roof. I mean, to me, that's just alien. I think that's just awful. So with this system, of course, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna take all of that nice warm air, send it back to the unit. It's gonna recover the heat. It's gonna mix it with clean, fresh air, and that's gonna be distributed to all of the habitable rooms, providing a much nicer environment to live in. It reduces dust and all the things associated with allergies as well. There's allergy filters built in. So it's just perfect for modern living and a modern house. Right, I'm gonna take you through to the very beginning and I think that's where the unit goes. I think that's the beginning of the system. And by the way, can you hear that rain? It is absolutely tipping it down outside. So if you hear that rain, hopefully it won't put you off the, yeah. the sound. Oh, well, we can hear you over the rain. Okay, so well, I... oh, by the way, I've got Dylan here with me today. Roger's just absolutely busy elsewhere, so I've actually got the top cameraman on site, <laughs> and I'm really happy about that. So if you hear anyone talking to me in the background, that is Dylan. Um, you've probably got to know him quite well now over the years. Um, right, coming through, this is the utility room of the building, and in the utility room, we've got a linen cupboard. Part of the preparation work, before all of the material arrived on site from Lindab, what I did was I made some models up just to enable me to work my roots out and to make sure that the drawing that they produce for me, this is Lindab Residential, they produce the drawing for the whole system. They work it all out based on the area of the building and all the other parameters that you need, for example, like ceiling heights and stories, etc. This is a single story building, which has lent itself to a few problems because there's a lot of ducts to get through the ceiling, but I've managed to work out routes for every single one without any effect on the structure at all, which is fantastic. So what you see here above me is the top of the unit. Well, it's actually not the top of the unit, it's a piece of MDF, but it represents the top of the unit. It's exactly to size. I've got four steel ducts, they're spiral ducts made by Lindab. They're 200 millimeter in diameter. Two of them will go to the outside. One will extract the stale air and one will bring in fresh air. They all need to work in conjunction with the eco joists that I've got here. And I've written on here where you've got extract air, exhaust air, intake air and supply air. So let's take supply air for example. That means that's the air that's gonna to go to all the habitable rooms. So from here, I bring a 200 millimeter duct up, I go through the ceiling and I connect it to the back of the manifold. 
The manifold I've got here has got 10 spigots or 10 outlets. That means there's gonna be 10 ducts running away from it. And each of those ducts goes to one of the habitable rooms. And prior to getting that on site, I also did a full scale mock-up of, of the manifold. And that enabled me to fix that up in position and work away from it with my roots. Now, because the Indomo duct, which is the Lindab duct, wasn't on site, I actually got some land drainage duct, which was 10 millimeters bigger, and I made sure I could get that to fit everywhere. So I knew when I got the size of the duct, the correct size of the duct on site, I'd have no problem with it. So this is the manifold, and this one here is for our extraction. It's exactly the same as the supply manifold. This has got 10 ports, and it's obviously got the port on the back, which is for the main duct that goes back to the unit. Now this one here is gonna be screwed up in place of the model that you see up there. So that one will go exactly in place of that to scale. So here's the spigot on the back of the manifold, and this is for the 200 mil duct, which goes to the unit. So it's gonna pass straight the way through here. It's gonna turn 90 degrees, and then 90 degrees through, and it's gonna go straight back into the top of the unit here. So ideally, with any kind of ventilation, you want to make sure that the duct runs are as small as possible. And that's what we've been able to do here. We've managed to work this out that the longest duct to get outside is roughly four meters. All the other ducts are much less than that. So um, I'm really happy with the fact we've been able to do that. Sometimes you might install these in a loft. They might be close to the loft floor. Then you might have to run a fairly big duct to get out. So um, keeping the ducts to a minimum is always a benefit. So what I'm doing now, this is a plenum. Basically what it is, is your outlet, which is what you see in the room, all you see is a disc, and that covers up the actual valve. The valve is adjustable to control the airflow, but we'll come onto that when we do the commissioning. So basically what I've done here, for every single plenum, I want the center of my ducts to be in the center of the joists. So I've made a series of battens up. These battens can be used side by side where the valves are facing parallel with the joists and then I can use them separated where the valves are facing away. So it's a simple process. I've marked it out exactly where I want it. I've re related that back onto this button. So I'm gonna now mount this up straight into there. And that's effectively the install done. So it's really simple. Now, what I will say about this is the position of the plenums in the rooms want to be as far away from the door as possible. So when the air's coming in, all the fresh air's coming in, it's sort of ventilating back towards the doorway. The other thing you want to watch is the position in relation to the walls. What you can't have, it's hard to me to do this, I've screwed it on. What you don't want is the plenum right in the corner. The problem with that is, is the distribution of the air, it's gonna wash down the walls, it's not gonna be that, that even. And the other thing is, when we do the commissioning and the testing, we use an anometer, and what that does, it measures the airflow coming through. The, and what, what that needs to do is actually completely encompass, so it's got a bit of a cowl on it, goes up against the ceiling, and that needs position to get in. So if you're too close to the wall, you might not get a correct reading. So this is a little shower room, an ensuite shower room. So this is for extraction. And you'll notice that this plenum, single spigot, that's all we need, one duct straight back to the extract manifold. So now that all the plenums are in place in the respective rooms, I'm gonna replace my template manifold with the real thing. And the reason why I made this template manifold was purely because before I got all of the material on site, I just wanted to make sure everything would fit where I wanted it to fit. I'm just a bit anal like that, you all know that. So I'm gonna remove this out of the way, replace it with the real thing, and then it's down to ducting. We're gonna start putting the ducting in. <laughs> Gary, can you pass me my manifold, please? The spigot at the back, I'm gonna position directly in between these two struts. So I've marked up my grounds to make it a little bit easier for me. And also that the spigot will sit perfectly in there. I can just line this up where I need it to be and we'll fix that in. So this is the Indomo duct from Lindab. It's an airtight jointing system. As you see me pushing it into the plenum, there's two industrial grade gaskets there. So this is great. It's a push fit system. 
I said there's the double sealed industrial grade gasket in there, no tape required, there's nothing, no silicon, it's perfect, it's clipped in. Right, let's get on with the rest of the ducting. Gary? Yep. We're going to start with the ducting, so I've got them all in some sequence here, and I've marked my plan up 1 to 19, and we'll start with number 1. And the reason we've done that is that they all run together and nothing crosses over apart from where you've got the extract and the supply which do pass underneath each other. Pull it all here, let it go underneath yeah. to get it roughly where we need it, yeah? And this is the tightish bit, all right? But because I've made these lovely patrices which are Could rounded, it for the next one? I think I need that one for the next, for the next pipe. Have you got to trim the end flat? I'll trim it, yeah. So this is the way that Lindab achieve their air tightness and also the simplicity of fitting the ducts together. This is the equivalent of the 200 mil spiral duct that goes into the back of the manifolds. On the back of the manifolds and all the other fittings, whether it's an elbow, or a 45 degree bend, you can see they've got this double lipped industrial grade gasket and it's, a, it's just a very simple push fit. So basically, keep it nice and square. I'll try to do it here to sort of give you an idea. So you can put it on, there's the first gasket in, here's the second gasket in and that's it. So it's important that you've got a nice square cut obviously and you can't even see the gasket, obviously it's both compressed nice and flat now. So there's the other benefits of this are the fact that you can take it apart for easy cleaning as well. And I've got a couple of pieces to show you going into the back of the manifold, which will eventually end up at the unit. So here we go. It's a bit tricky to pull these small bits apart because it's such a good fit, but there you go. That's the principle. So let's feed this first section of duct in, which has been cut to length. There you see, I've got it engaged on the spigot and I'm just going to gently push that back. There's no twisting involved, it's really straightforward. Then we've got an elbow now on this particular run which is going to take us back towards the unit again. Yeah, it's not too bad is it? Ah, it's nothing. The pallet that way, Devon. Yeah, just roll it forward. So we've finally come to the point of the installation where we're going to be fitting the unit. The unit arrived with me yesterday, but prior to that I did do a bit of prep work so I made up my template of the top so I could rough in the direction of the ducts into the cupboard and know that I wasn't going to hit any joists. I've got all of the other ducting in the ceiling, so we've got the supply duct, we've got the extract duct, it's all in, fitted, clipped, manifolds, plenums all ready to go. And just a little bit about the unit quickly. So we have the whole process of this is, we're extracting the bathroom stale moist air. It's then gonna get rid of all the stuff we don't want and the heat from that is gonna pass over a heat exchanger. It's gonna be mixed with fresh air and it's gonna be sent back to the habitable room. So that's the whole idea of this. It's a full ventilation and heat recovery system. It weighs about 55, 60 kilos, which is, probably on the limit for two men because they say that you should only lift 25 kilos but in realistic terms it's quite often not the case that there's any more than two of you to do an install like this um, the other way you could lift it potentially you might be able to winch it up off the joists but then you've got to swing it in so we've prepared somewhere for it to land we'll land it we'll get it exactly how we want it and then we'll fix it back to the wall so the unit is resting in position on this temporary structure because it's a wall mounted unit and for final levelling I'm going to slide my airbags in at the back under each corner then I can simply just tweak up the pump, check the level right at the back and then fix it straight through. So a little device like this comes in really handy for that. There's no damage to anything, there's no damage to the unit and I'm not trying to get a crowbar underneath it. So this is the ideal solution for that. So we'll just pop these in and give it a levelling up.
Okay, Rog, so what we've got first of all is we've got four equal duck spigots here. And these are roughly three times the diameter. And there's actually a note in the manual that says that the minimum for, I think it's the extract, is three times the diameter. So I've based all of mine on that. Oh, that's absolutely perfect. That looks great, mate. You're in. Yeah, we're, we're going to commit to that length. That length's perfect. The length we worked out Not together. Five. 570, we'll just give it another five mil so everything's just absolutely perfect. Okay, let's get going. Okay, let's go. Try on that one. Yeah, I'm gonna put a spigot. You sure? Yeah. I thought it was gonna go here a bit. It doesn't have one now, so it goes to this manifold here. It, el it elbows and comes back along here. What we're looking for is see how far that yeah, passes yeah, the joist. I understand that. So it's parallel and true. Cupping goes on the outside. Yeah, always so outside. Same. Yeah, that's like the duck, that thing. Yeah, yeah. 12, 4, 5. Check it around the top now. Yeah, it's good. 12, 4, 5. So the unit's hung on the wall and all of the spigots and spiral ducts are now in. So that means they're coming up through the ceiling and into their respective manifold. So this one here is the supply air. That is indicated quite easily by all of the red clips. So anything going through the building with a red clip is supply air. And then the duct behind it is going to the extract manifold. And then all of the ducts with the blue clips are the extract here and then all we got left to do now is connect the two last ducts which are going to go out to atmosphere so there's the intake and the extract and incidentally there's a couple of measurements here so the minimum distance required distance is 300 millimeters apart but the suggested is two millimeters two hunt two meters apart excuse me two meters apart and that's obviously because if you're pumping out stale moist air you don't want to be sucking it back in so the further apart they are the better in my case i have to fit between the diagonals of my eco joist here which is around about 1.4 meters so we're way over the 300 and slightly under the two meters but that's absolutely perfect so we've got now to cut through the outside of the fascia which is a rendered fascia here and it's all marked up and so i'm going to climb up there and just take out the render board and that will feed exactly back where we want it, put the grills over and that's all of the ducting complete. So um, quite straightforward. I suppose in time it took me a couple of days to put all of the plastic ducts through which goes to the plenums, the extract and the supply and it's taken me probably about four hours to do the spiral ducting. So actually it's not a very labour intensive job at all. Considering how tough it is, the blade's got me 99% of the way around. There was just too much for it, so we have to finish it off. There we go. You can see just how thick that board is. It's a... Um, what is it? It's a render board. Yeah. It's called Magply. It's really good stuff. Um, and it's got a polymer render on top, and there's a mesh in there as well. And so, yeah, it's... Good stuff, tough stuff. Thanks, mate. Now, um, hang on, manage. It's actually very light, this stuff, so if I shoulder it in here. Keep going. Yeah? All right, mate. Mind your fingers. If I think it's probably the spirals that need a twist as well, isn't it? So this is just slightly, this one is very slightly higher, so it's yeah. probably been jacked up by that. Probably just held up by that but little it'll bit. But it'll go, it just needs yeah. pushing. I just push it with my hands, All right. you, you push it in. Okay, I'll get my gloves on and I'll push it home. Yeah. Are we travelling in? You can see it, mate, I can't. That's it there. It's absolutely spot on. And have a look at the outside, it's dead flush. And then this little baby here will go into here like so. With a bit of adhesive? Yeah, and with that will be... Plastic. Yeah, I'll, I'll silicone right round the tube first. Yeah. 
So we're now at the exciting stage of doing the commissioning of the MVHR. I'm joined here with Mike Trotter from Lindab. Lindab, as you know, are the people who produced this system for me and supplied it all to us to site. So Mike, um, this is not the sort of thing you normally do come out on site, is it? We do come out on site and we do give advice on site. We don't generally do the commissioning, but we will offer advice where we can, um, just to give people peace of mind um, and, and make sure they're doing the right thing. Brilliant, so you're here to hold my hand? Basically, yeah. Let's get on with it. Let's do it. So the first stage is to go round and put in the valve, and this is also the cover for the valve, which face we'll leave, yeah. face plate we'll leave till last. So just tell me a little bit about these um, valves, if you like. Okay, so there are Lindab airy valves. There yeah. are architectural valve, um, so they're they're neat on the eye and they're very practical. Um, the the way the cone is shaped, as as we'll see in a second, it gives it a grander effect. So the air diffuses and hugs the ceiling and diffuses down nicely into the room, giving ultimate airflow. Uh, okay. essentially and very easy to commission and there are simple push fit these little spring teeth if you like just clip in uh, or grab into the, the plenum so i know that we're going to go around we're going to whack all of these in and we are going to set them roughly what halfway halfway to two, to two thirds maybe three quarters yep and then that'll give us a good basis for, for starting the commission of the system brilliant and so you wouldn't lock it off at this stage you'll just roughly set it to halfway yeah so we normally bring this wing nut all the way down to the bottom bring this little cone to about there. That's probably about two thirds, three quarters. Okay. And then we would just pop them in as they are now. Okay then Mike, let's pop the first one in. Go for I'll it. I'll jump up on the hop up. Nice Easy one. Valve. And it's a very simple push, he says. This is the first one. That's it. And look how neat that is. That's lovely, Perfect. isn't it? Perfect. I'm pleased with that. So all of the valves are in the ceiling. We're going to plug the unit in a second once I've fitted this control panel and we're going to balance this system. So I've just got to fix the controller. I've mounted the back plate on the wall. I've pulled my cable through. I've made the connection inside the unit, which was fairly straightforward following the instructions. But when I came to the back of the controller, I was a little bit bamboozled. I was wondering which of the colors goes into there. But then this is pretty genius. So when I pulled this out, there's a little port there. You plug that in there. It says A and B, which relates to the manual, which gives me the terminal colors that I need. So we're plugged in, the controller's all powered up. And we, what we've done is we've set the percentages ready for commissioning. So we basically, Go to the menu, engineering settings, one, two, three, four, one's passcode, airflow, and we have different speeds and different percentages. Mike set this up so we can go around and testing and we're gonna test this all on speed number two. Speed number two, 60%. which is at 60%. So I'm at the furthest valve on extract. I'm using this, which is called a vein anemometer. It's by a company called Testo. It's a very accurate measuring device and it's very simple to do. I put this against the ceiling. It's drawing the air through. It's completely sealed here, it's very important. Leave it there for 20 odd seconds or a bit longer. And as soon as you're getting a steady reading, in this case, I can press hold, bring it down. I'm getting 11.3, I need 11. I'm within the tolerances, so I'll probably just lock that one off there now and move on to the next one. gone around and balanced all of the air flows and I was worried about it was going to be a bit too scientific but actually with the use of the controls in this case there's an app which goes with the unit and what we're aiming for is a trickle rate so our speed one is our trickle rate and we've managed to get the fan running at 42% which is pretty good bang on and what have building regs tried to tell you? Um, so we aim to select the units between 40 and 60%. So to be at the lower end of that is the spot on. It just means the unit's gonna be more efficient and a lot quieter. Brilliant. And on speed two, which is boost, we're at 54%. 54%, yep. 
Um, and so boost is obviously when you've got a little bit more need for extraction, yeah, cooking, and showering, etc. And I know that from what we've discussed, I can time my boost times as well. So that's pretty handy. I'll probably have it on when people are showering and that sort of stuff. Um, and then lastly, the last speed is the purge speed. So if I have a party or anything like that, and I'll there's lots of people <laughs> and they've all gone and it's all a bit, oh my God, it's a bit chaotic in here, a bit stuffy. Bang that on. Purge on. Yep. And it will just speed everything up, yeah. get everything moving. So that yeah. is really useful. And also, you bought this device with you. I have. It's a sound meter. So building regs requires 30 decibels maximum in the uh, habitable room, so your bedrooms, uh, your living spaces. So we can measure it with this, and we were achieving 33 decibels without furnishings. That's pretty good. Excellent. So once we've got the, the furnishings, the carpets to absorb that sound, we're going to be well below 30 decibels. So after six months, I'll need to clean the filters. It's an easy job. Open the front, pull them out, give them a good hoovering, put them back. Pollen filter on this side, which is quite nice as well. Um, also, the system by the controller will tell me when I need to change them as well. And that's an easy thing to do. Well, I hope you found this video really enjoyable and informative. I certainly learned a lot in the time I've been making this video with Lindab. Um, anyone interested in MVHR or associated products, don't hesitate to ask me in the question box or equally reach out to Lindab. They've been an excellent source of knowledge and of help. Mike, thanks Good very much. Thank you.